when you talk about online networking, it sounds like we're relieving you of actual traditional face-to-face networking, which I think there's almost nothing more important. Welcome to Breaking Down Your Business, episode 354. You are welcome. You can find the show notes of this episode at breakingdownyourbusiness.com slash 354. Welcome, Brad. Top of the morning to you, Jill. Oh, dear God. This is Brad from Anchor Advisors. Okay, we don't need a British accent. It's oh. St. Patrick's Day. And it so is? And so we need an Irish accent. Uh, can, can you do one? No, obviously. Was... I'm Jill from the founding mom. That's not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Nothing so... says Irish more than that sentence. <laughs> I think we should just. I was going to go Joe. into like bad leprechaun, but no, then I hey. thought I can't even do that. I can do a lot of accents, but Irish. This is not month one. we're talking about lead generation. Thank goodness. <laughs> so, Jill, how much do you know about employment law? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. You went to law school. You know nothing about employment law. I know law. nothing about employment law. How are small business owners supposed to figure out employment law if they didn't even go to law school? Thankfully, we have an incredible sponsor called Comply Right. Comply Right. That's offering a six-course freebie to educate you on employment stuff regarding wow. your business. I know. So if you're a business owner, chances are you're juggling many HR tasks and you're trying to keep up with the ever-changing employment laws. They're changing all the time. Yep. HR 101 from ComplyRight is a free online training program that'll give you a solid understanding of employment law so you can handle typical workplace issues like a pro. This is completely free? Yeah. There are, I'm just going to list to you some of the courses that they offer. General legal obligation for employers. Important. Recruiting and hiring. Hard. Classifying workers correctly. Complicated. Yeah. Managing your employees. Preventing Tricky. workplace harassment. Yikes. And discipline and termination. Mm. So I'm going to send you to complyright.com slash courses. It's totally free. Go there right now. Do the thing. Wow. Networking is a tactic that a lot of folks use. <laughs> yes, For it local is. lead generation. Wait, what are we talking about? Lead generation. Oh, again. Okay. For a whole month. Well, I was going to say. This was your idea to have like just, monthly If you're themes. just coming in now, go back and listen to the last two episodes <laughs> because we talked about lead generation already. Still a dirty phrase in my mind, but we're going to continue talking about it. I just hate the words lead generation put together. You literally wrote the themes for the month. You don't need to pick on me. I'm letting people know <laughs> they can hear more about it in previous episodes, and we shall proceed. Okay. Networking is a way that a lot of people generate leads in a local market. Yes. Yep. But I'm going to propose that there's a new kind of networking that we shouldn't be sleeping on. Online networking. Ugh. Okay. No, it's, uh, Ugh. Tell me. What, 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 what's going died. on? I There's something died. going on in your head. Tell me about well, it. Well, online networking is like the bane of my existence. Why is that? No, it's Even not. It is not the bane of your I existence. I run an online networking group. <laughs> it is. You're uh, repudiating your own business. Is no, that what you're saying? Well, sort of. I, <laughs> I, I hate it so much in that people hear it. It's to me the lazy woman's way of doing networking. And whoa, whoa, whoa! And I don't like that when you There's talk about online networking. There's a ton of judgment there. There is. When you talk about online networking, it sounds like we're relieving you of actual traditional face-to-face networking, which I think there's almost nothing more important when we're talking networking. All right, so now we're going to have a fight. Good. Because I think Bring that, it on. that face-to-face networking, while valuable when you're mm-hmm. at the very beginning of your business, mm-hmm. is a time-suck, inefficient... Uh, talk about lazy person. I'm just going to show up to a meeting that I has other like business people in it. you are... This is hilarious, considering that... Do you want to talk about how we met and started this podcast? Was it in an online networking group, or was it because of a face-to-face interaction? It was at a <gasps> conference, which is oh. different to me than networking. I'm just talking about when people... We don't even need to go here, but and, you said and actually, online networking. Oh, let's back up, and it sets let's, me off. Let us let's then it's back up. We're leaving people. How did we know each other t- enough for you to sit down next to me at that conference? All I remember is I walked into a different face-to-face event offline and saw you giving a talk. Yes, and thought it was so great that I was taking pictures of the easel you were drawing. Okay, on. that's I think the first time I ever saw in, you. In what like. It was a chamber of 2006 event. or I don't know, something like that. years ago. Okay, sure, right. That's sure, my point. Sure. So now that we're in 2020, yep. we might think about how we could do, ha- have that same function, 
but with a larger group of people, people more than just the people that happen to show up for, for a happy hour at the Chamber of Commerce. Sure. And find people, instead of just networking again with whoever shows up, most of mm-hmm. whom are people you never want to talk to again, mm-hmm. you know, realtors, Mary Kay people, financial planner, blah, 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 Whoever. blah, right? Sure. The flotsam and jetsam, those groups. We can actually find the people that are people that we do want to talk to and talk to them. All right. Sure. It's not interesting to me. Let me. Let, so when you were good at face to face networking, Ooh, when, when, that was, when that was paying off for you, it's still paying off for me. <sighs> when was the last time you went to just a networking event that wasn't a founding mom's event? Uh, three weeks ago. What was it? It was an event at Soho House in Chicago. So it wasn't it wasn't a big cold call thing. It was an exclusive thing. Correct. Okay. And I made several connections there. Sure. That I'm more excited about than the last several weeks of connections online. Okay. But my point is that is a invitation only, highly curated group of people where where it's a target rich environment. This all sounds like you were, if you are so down on network offline networking the way you're talking about it, you weren't doing it right. <laughs> Is all I'm going to say. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Which is weird, because don't you run mastermind groups offline? Online. Are they only online? Yeah. I thought they were also face-to-face. No. Oh, well then carry this torch, Brad. I didn't realize that. <laughs> I thought you're knocking the thing that you're so doing. So let's back it. Let me go back to when you went to that event three weeks ago where you yeah. met those people. Yeah. Uh, Love them. Was the value of the connection what happened there that night, or was it the follow-up where you had a one-on-one with them sometime later well you're gonna hate this because this is gonna sound like an exception but i am so glad i went and met with those people because we had emailed previously for once or twice with the connection yeah and uh i was zero zero interest and because they happened to be at this event and we connected face to face i loved it it was fantastic we're both going to benefit uh, by working together, but not et cetera. not so. So what happened at the networking group was you saw the value in the connection, but the Correct. value wasn't created in that networking group. The value is created in the things that you do later. The value on. was created in the second time we met. Offline. Correct. So yeah. so here's what I'm going to point out is that I think a lot of people are on social media for whatever that means. Sure. Right. Sure. And they're on social media mostly either consuming information mm-hmm. or broadcasting information. Correct. Neither of if if you're in a a face-to-face networking group, and there's someone there who's just broadcasting information. What do you think well, of that person? No, they leave because we kick them out. Right. Because you're and stupid. if there's a person there who's just consuming information, mm-hmm. how likely are they to get value out well, of it? maybe they did, but we didn't. Correct. Yeah. Right. So what I'm suggesting is if we take our skills that we learned in our face-to-face networking mm-hmm. and use them in a social media environment where we reach out to connect to specific people. Yes. Hey, this is me. I want to meet you. Yep. This is why I think meeting together would make sense. Then taking it off of the social network into a phone call or a video call or whatever it is yep. so that you can have that second connection where you can talk about, is there really a fit here for us to work together? Yep. That, that can be a very efficient form of lead generation. I agree. <laughs> I agree. For you, that might be the case. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I... I don't know. It's kind of like how they always say word of mouth is king. Uh, To me, face to face, there's a stat I read years ago when I was prepping a talk that I love. And I know you're going to make fun of it because I think I've said it to you before. 90% of interaction is nonverbal. So if I show up in a room. 76.9% of statistics are made up on the spot. But if I show up to a room, I can read it much more clearly. Maybe it's no just doubt. me. No doubt. No, I, that's 100. And so the, the, the depth of the connection is so much better that I think you and I would do worse recording this podcast if we did this virtually than I don't we disagree. do in the room. Right. I'm not arguing that online connections are the same thing as face-to-face connections. I thought that's where you were What going. I'm arguing is that online connections are a much more efficient way to get to face-to-face connections. Yes. Uh, yes, and that's where I do agree with you, but I thought you were saying... Because I think I thought that because my assumption is always when people start talking about online connecting... Uh, it's in place of offline. And to me, that's a massive mistake I don't want people to make. So I am, sh- you know, when people say, let's grab coffee, I am more frequently saying, why don't we just get her on a video call? And Be- I am as well. Because, because of the efficiency. The efficiency. Correct. Yep. yep. Uh, and if, if I want to have a business conversation, a coffee shop's not the place I want to have it. 
Oh, I do. Mm. I don't mind that. If, if, if I want to have a conversation where I'm talking to you about what the biggest challenges you are having in growing your business and ways in which that... Well, again, we're doing different things. It is true. And so I don't need to vet them and potentially take them on as a client. So maybe that's why it's different. Well, but you're also looking for partnerships. You, you, you're looking I for, am. Right. I don't mind a coffee shop. I don't mind a street corner. I really don't care where. I much prefer to see your face than I do to chat with you online. I also have always been the kind of person who goes into, like, if there's somebody who posts something on LinkedIn or Facebook and everybody's chiming in with their comments and their viewpoints, to me, I, it's just such a waste of time. Such right. a massive waste and, of time. And that's what I'm saying is that you find people in those, in those venues yep. where you're like, you know, that person has a point of view that would be really interesting to my yes. audience. Yes. Or I, would want to, I want to find out more about what that person does. And then you, you reach out to them. Do you them. often reach out and say, let's take this yes. elsewhere? Yes. Oh, I love that about you. Okay. I mean, and, and you, I don't a, think a lot of people do. I agree with you. That's why we're talking about this. Yeah. So, like, the whole reason that I'm engaging on a social media platform is to find interesting people to then say, hey, uh, usually I'll go to the DM and be like, tell me more. You know, mm. or, or I, I have a question for you. Yeah. And then you, so you engage a little bit there, and then you say, hey, would you be willing to get on the phone or, or do a Can video call? Can you trace back to when you realized cultivating a potential connection worked for you? Uh... So this is going back in the archives. There was a there was a time when I had uh, an online community called Enmast. Mm, I remember, and yeah. um, we relied heavily on partnerships to for for marketing, and most of our effective partnerships we met online mm. because we were looking for who's posting you know information material, who's trying to reach this same audience, and so that made it a lot. Um, a lot easier, easier? Yeah. right, to identify who the right people were and Got then it. take that offline. And then now that I learned how to do that in that context, ah. I, I can do it in other contexts. Yeah, because I think a long time ago, I used to tell folks when I would, I would give talks on, say, Twitter when it was a when better was a thing. thing. Yeah. Uh, and I would say your whole goal of being on this platform is not to amass connections and followers, but to literally find people to take it offline. Correct. And I don't think people do that anymore. Hence my upset when you brought this up at the start. <laughs> so in other words, it might not be that I'm doing it wrong. It might be that you're doing it wrong. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do you feel better? Next week, we're going to talk about partnerships. <laughs> oh, fun. Much yeah. more fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And hey, call us. 708-872-7878. Text us. BreakingDownYourBusiness.com slash iTunes. Leave us a review because we love you so much. We crushed it.